Well, as promised on the last Test Gear Ted Teardown, we're going to have a look at the Hewlett Packard 209A Oscillator. Now, this is one of HP's 200 range of, originally they were audio oscillators. This one goes slightly higher than audio range, but it's still a good audio test uh, instrument. Uh, basically a signal generator, fairly simple, straightforward. It's a Weinbridge oscillator, so there's an op-amp and there's some feedback which makes it oscillate. Uh, it produces a sine wave which comes out of these terminals over here. And there's an amplitude control for the sine wave. But this one also has the feature of a square wave simultaneously coming out of these terminals. And this is the amplitude, separate amplitude control for the square wave. Over here we've got off and then the usual frequency range select. And the big dial on the front here, this is the main frequency dial. So uh, as I turn that, um, the the scale here shows frequency and up in the corner we have the the fine adjustment this is simply a mechanical it's not geared it's just a friction drive here so as I turn this little knob it's turning the rim of the larger dial um, the dial goes from 2 to 20 which is rather nice for audio use because it means you get when you set down here and you set this to times 10 you get um, 20 Hertz and then it goes through to 2 kilohertz and starting at 2 it's quite a, it's just nice to get that 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz range for audio use so it, 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 it's quite a nice instrument from that point of view I was surprised to find that this panel is plastic this is a 209 um, the original of HP's first product was an HP 200. Um, this is a 209. I think this is probably uh, towards the end of the development of this range of oscillators. And it's been re-engineered in various ways, repackaged in various ways. It's a bit smaller than I expected, and it has a plastic front panel. This, this slight yellowing of the plastic gives it away slightly. It's not quite the colour you'd expect an HP instrument to be. Um, but I thought, let's do a test, a, a, a test gear teardown. Um, we'll take it to bits. So I took the side skins off, the metal plates off the sides, and I've actually, as it is now, I've taken all the metal work off the sides. I've taken the top, the bottom, the left and right sides, and the uh, heavier aluminium frames, and you still can't see inside it it's got another metal box inside the first metal box and that's now got to come off so I've had to cheat slightly I don't normally do this on test gear tear down uh, I'm going to take it to bits and I thought it, if I take 10 minutes taking that apart uh, that's going to get a bit boring so let's get on with it and take it apart from this point uh, we can't see anything at this stage we've got the mains on the back there some uh, grounding connections we can't really see anything um, more of it's got to come to pieces so I had to read the manual to find out exactly how it's done um, the manual tells you to take these uh, metal side cheeks off the device you can see the screw holes there's a screw hole there screw hole there all the screw holes even though this is a plastic panel there's a little brass insert so the screw thread is going into a little brass insert in the plastic right then so the manual says remove the rear panel now this turns out to be the power supply you see it's metal all over but there's a connector here and if we just pull gently at that point the edge there it is the edge connector comes to pieces so that little green thing is an edge connector which has come away from the main PCB which is in the bottom of the case at the top up there there are two slots in the PCB and they unhook there we go so now we've got the power supply separate from the actual oscillator let's look at the power supply first of all it's quite interesting in its own right 
So there it is. There's the power supply. Let's put it the right way up, like that. There's the mains inlet connector, the back of it. There's the mains voltage switch, the mains transformer, two regulated transistors with heat sinks, and look at the staining there on those capacitors where the heat from the transistors has just slightly stained those two capacitors. More capacitors down the bottom here. This board does not look like it's gold plated all over. Unlike typical HP gear of the time, it does not look like it's gold plated all over. It looks like it's tinned. Uh, rectifier at the top there, I think. Um, Mains transformer. How's that held down? Not quite clear. It looks like it's held down by its terminals on the bottom there. Um, now, I had a close look at this, and in fact, there are date codes on these transistors. That one says. Uh, 7252 this one down here um, hasn't got a date code on that one 7247 up here there's a capacitor um, and there's a 7308 on there so this is end of 72 beginning of 1973 um, that's just the power supply these have been getting hot they've been getting a little bit of a um, a dust stain there. Okay, that's passable. What else have we got in here? We have got this box, which is now the actual oscillator itself. Um, another little mark there, which is caused by heat. There's the edge connector for connecting the power supply to the main oscillator. Um, but let's get on with it and take the screws out. There's a nylon screw in the top it just holds the top of the inner can and then there are two screws on the sides one up there and one on the other side of it and turn that round the other screw is there now you're really not meant to take this off unless you have to um, all the calibration um, adjustments are available through holes in the inner screening can and there's even test points down here test points marked AGC B plus B minus and bias um, so there's adjustments and test points accessible without taking this cover off so we're not really meant to take this cover off unless you have to well I think we have to I think I think we're really gonna have to take the cover off now having got this far um, and I think that is best lifted gently off. Uh, come on. There it goes. There it goes. That slides off. And then, haha, it's revealed. There we go. Um, we finally got down to the internals of this thing. So there is the fantastic variable capacitor which actually tunes the thing when you turn the knob on the front it doesn't turn a variable resistor as you might expect it turns this massive multi-plate air dielectric variable capacitor there it is in its minimum capacitance position where the, the veins of the capacitor are fully separated and then we turn the knob and they mesh and that, that, that's maximum capacitance position. Let's look at that from a different angle which might be a little bit easier to see really what's going on. Look at it from the back maybe that might be the best way to operate the control from the front. So that the plates are fully meshed and then I turn the knob on the front the plates unmesh and that's back to minimum capacitance. Now the actual plates are a somewhat funny shape which makes the actual capacitance variation linear which makes the frequency dial come out the way HP wanted it in the first place. Um, so these things are very carefully calculated and designed and engineered to make the variation in capacitance go just right. Linear variation in capacitance. Um, the drive 
and the mechanical arrangement. There's a ball bearing here. There's a gear down in here because this, this is offset from the center line of the instrument. So there's actually a gear in between the, the big dial and the shaft that operates the capacitor. Now, I don't think we can see much of that. It's quite difficult to see, but we'll try and get a shot of that. Can we see in there? Well, there's a there's a shaft coupler and there's gears going around in there. This is the um, slow motion drive or the, or the the fine adjustment control. Uh, that that actually works mechanically on the outside by friction. The so grounding prong there for the cover. On the back of the capacitor there's actually a date written on there June the 4th 1973 so that's probably the date when it was assembled it's been stamped by the person who assembled it uh, June the 4th 73 and look at that printed circuit board down there that is all gold plated all over which is what we'd expect for an HP bit of kit let's get a slightly closer shot of that if we can there is the very fine gold plated all over printed circuit board it's surprisingly not held in by very much this is perhaps one of HP's um, cost cutting measures they haven't compromised on gold plating but the board's not held in by very much it's only really held in when the covers on it's slightly loose I don't want to wiggle that too much. There are connectors down here for the, um, at the bottom here, there are connectors for the uh, front panel terminals. Um, but there's actually, it feels a little bit, it just sort of feels a little bit wobbly at this stage with the cover off. There are guides that guide the PCB when the cover's on, but with the cover off, a little bit, hmm, flapping about there. You see on this side we've got the wires to the variable capacitor there's two two sections of variable capacitor there there's adjustments those are visible through the side of the the can there's the switch for the uh, frequency ranges and the main main board of the thing down the bottom there is mostly by the looks of it discrete transistors I can't actually see uh, an integrated circuit on there just yet I don't think it has any I said that last time didn't I with the pulse generator and then there was one but I just can't see an integrated circuit on there it looks all discrete transistors which is a little bit of a surprise so okay um, in 73 to make a good oscillator they didn't need to use an integrated circuit they didn't want to use an integrated circuit they had a design that was absolutely fine with discrete transistors and they went with that it could be that the circuit design is actually got a bit older than 73 the manual I think is 68 uh, the circuit diagram in the manual um, and it's possible that this is um, a uh, more recent development of an earlier instrument and the earlier instrument was all discrete transistors and they stuck with it Look at the length of that capacitor that there's one capacitor all the way down there you can see it's really surprisingly long and it's manufactured by Sprague um, I think it says it's 300 microfarads but that is just a, a surprisingly long capacitor there's the connector for the uh, power supply to plug into. Um, it just plugs in there. And the manual does say if you want to operate the uh, oscillator with the cover off, you should plug the power supply back in. Okay, well you, you'd have to support it somehow. It's a little bit, um, a bit difficult to, to sort of hold the thing like this. Uh, lay that down again. There we go. There's the back of the board. The switch on the back here uh, sticks out through the rear panel. That is used to change the time constant in the oscillator so you can have a lower distortion of your sine wave 
but at the same time you can't adjust the frequency so quickly. If you do that it goes a bit, a bit rough. Uh, so you have to adjust the frequency dial more slowly but you can select that you're okay to do that and you get less distortion. Anyway, I think that's probably about it for the very fine HP209A oscillator, sine and square wave, uh, audio up to about a couple of megahertz. Um, interesting construction, quite unlike what I was expecting with this plastic front panel moulding here, and quite unlike what I was expecting with the additional internal screening box. So there we have it for another test gear teardown. Uh, a few other instruments that I've got lined up. Uh, there's an AVO uh, multimeter which I would like to tear down and I've also got some very interesting Panaplex displayed instruments. Uh, the, the Panaplex neon displays. Uh, one's a frequency meter and another uh, is a multimeter. And I've also got a uh, nice data precision um, frequency counter which is LED. So those are all coming up uh, to um, the test gear teardown in the near future.